Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And uh, this is a, another question of the week video. I have had multiple people ask this question and just haven't gotten around to making the video yet. I've got some notes down here and some thoughts on, um, on it. I've got 10 points. Uh, and the topic of the video is how to get out of the city if the shit hits the fan, or SHTF. Um, who knows what the event could be, okay? The, the idea is is just that you live in a big city, in an urban area, and something bad has happened, and it's not safe for you to be there anymore, and so you have to get out of the area. Uh, that's, you know, pretty much what we're going to focus on here. And this could be, you know, considered heavily, heavily suburb areas too, you know, with a lot of, uh, you know, neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff. This could, you know, easily apply. The first thing you want to you want to consider is is that you should always try to make your plans using the PACE acronym, and the PACE acronym is stands for Primary, Alternate, Contingency, and Emergency. So you want to you want to make your plans in a way that basically allow you to layer your system so that you have more than one option. Um, so with that, the first point here is, you know, regardless of whatever vehicle it is that you have, you ought to consider having a bike rack on it or some kind of a small trailer that you can pull. Okay. And the idea here is, is, you know, a bicycle is a great alternate method of transportation. Um, you know, your vehicle should always be your first choice. Okay, because you can carry a lot of weight in it, you can move great distances pretty quickly, and so you want to try to use your vehicle first. But if the roads are congested and if it's just not possible for you to get your vehicle through somewhere, then you want to have that alternative of um, having a bike rack on there. Okay, and that way you can use the bicycle because a bicycle is a lot more efficient than walking. Uh, it'll allow you to travel greater distances. You can go off road, you know, those kinds of things. Um, the other um, consideration with that is, you know, you may also want to have like a game cart or some other kind of device um, to, um, you know, put your gear into so that it's easier for you to pull or something along those lines. And I'll kind of throw a picture in here of a game cart and what I'm talking about. I know I did another video on this that talked about a few different alternatives for carrying a backpack, um, you know, when you're bugging out and so to make it easier to, you know, pull things with you and that kind of stuff. So you guys can check that out. I'll try to put the video in the description below. So number one, have a bike rack. Number two is you want to load the vehicle with as much gear and food, your bug out bags and all that kind of stuff, you know, as possible. Don't forget your bike. Like I said, if you've got a trailer and an ATV, then, um, you know, or dirt bikes or something along those lines, then that is just as good too. Because again, maybe a vehicle can't get through, but maybe a uh, small ATV and a small trailer, you know, with your bug out bags and even your bike or whatever in the back of that, um, those might be able to get through. See how we're layering it, okay? We're getting multiple layers. That's the optimum of what you're looking for. It gives you multiple options. Okay, um, point number three here is, is that when you're doing this, when you're packing up, you want to make sure that you're as discreet as possible. You don't want everybody in the world to know that you're doing this, um, making a big commotion out in front of your house and all that kind of stuff. If you can pack this stuff up in your garage, or something along those lines, excuse me, then that's going to be optimum. You probably are going to want to leave early in the morning if you have the choice, um, just because there's less activity, you know, on the streets and in the roadways in the early mornings. However, based on the situation that you're facing, that may not be an option for you. Okay, number four is um, you want to utilize tertiary back roads, something with speed limits probably less than 45 miles per hour. Uh, preferably these roads, um, you, you'd like to have roads that parallel railroad tracks, high tension power lines, and things like that. Now obviously that may not be something that everybody can do, but when you're making your plan well before the disaster, pull out a road map of the area and look and see what options you have to you. And if you have options that 
go in the general direction you're needing to go and they also follow power lines and or railroad tracks or something along those lines then that's that's a good thing for you because if you have to get off the roads those are good areas are good places for you to travel because in a lot of cases it'll show them on maps and um, the the ground is easier to walk on and it's cleared away so you're not walking through woods and stuff like that so those they make a good option but the key point for number four is you want to use back roads stay away from freeways and highways and you know any any road that is probably you know over 55 miles an hour unless um, you're fairly certain that they're going to be clear and they're kind of in an out of the way area. Okay, the next one is is that you want to plan multiple routes to potential destinations um, in each cardinal direction. And it's okay to go ahead and pencil those routes on a map. Just don't actually finish, you know, where the route is going to. Um, you know, so that if somebody looks at it, you know, you you're not giving away where you're going. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Um, but you want to you want to have um, multiple routes, and the reason for that is is depending on the nature of the disaster, you don't know for sure that you'll be able to leave your town from the east. If a disaster had happened over on the east side, then that may keep you from going that direction, and you might have to go another way. So you know. It, if your bug out location or your friend's house or the hotel you're going to or whatever the case may be, you know, a couple hours away or something like that, um, you know, because let's face it, most disasters are going to be regional. It's very unlikely that you're going to see a nationwide disaster. Um, but anyway, um, you want to have them going in all the different cardinal directions because you just don't know what the nature of disaster is going to be so if you plan a route in each direction then at least you have some different options you know for you okay uh, let's see number six I think I actually already touched this on this one avoid major freeways even if you think it's going to be faster uh, major freeways are going to be the first places to be blocked down and to get congested and to get caught in and what really sucks about them is once they're shut down and once you're in the middle of it, it's really hard to get off of. Um, we had a situation out in D.C. when I lived out there where there was an ice storm and it just shut the freeways and everything down. And everybody who was out there was just stuck, you know, for I don't I don't even remember a day and a half or something like that before they ended up getting all that stuff cleared out. Um, so situations can happen where freeways are going to be shut down and it's difficult to get off of them because you know the way that the exits are spread out and all that kind of stuff it just might not be that easy now if you have a four-wheel drive truck and you can just go off road or whatever the case may be maybe that's an option to you um, but i think it's better off just to plan going those back roads right away okay um once you have your plan, number seven here, once you have your plan figured out on which way you're going to go, you need to make sure to scout out the ATM locations, uh, the gas stations, places where you can get food, hotels along each route, and mark those things on the route. And that way, you know, you have an idea of what is going to be available to you on the route. So let's say you messed up and you, you left your car on empty which you shouldn't do. <laughs> you can look on the route and say, okay, on this route, I know we've got a gas station here this far. Maybe we can make it, you know, that far or whatever. You always should have at least half tank in your gas tank. And you should also have some additional fuel that you could be carrying with you. But the point is, is that if you do some scouting, you go along those routes, you take a look and see what resources are along the route, um, maybe potential sheltering locations, maybe uh, who knows what, you know, um, but having an idea of what is along each route is important. It's also equally important to know if there's nothing along the route uh, because that could be impactful for you as well. Um, if you're totally prepared and ready to go and you got everything that you need, then, then maybe that's a good route to go on when there's nothing on it. Um, but if you've got a few things that you need to get before you get out of town, you need to get some cash, you need to get gas, like I said, or something along those lines, then you want to know where they're at. Okay, uh, number eight is um, 
You also want to highlight your possible foot routes as well. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier is that, you know, if you have to go on foot or on bike or something along those lines, uh, ATV, you know, something other than a car, then railroad tracks, high tension power lines, greenways, trails, you know, those kinds of things are decent, uh, can make decent potential routes as long as they're going in the direction that you need to go and you know where they end up. You know, you don't want to hop onto something if you don't know where it's going to end up or where it's going or whatever. You want to, you want to know this stuff ahead of time. Um, but if you have to ditch the car, if you know, hey, if we just walk a mile north, there's a, uh, you know, east-west running railroad track that's going to take us all the way out to Smallville, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, that is good to know. And it's it's gonna it's gonna help you have a lot less uncertainty because you're probably gonna see a lot less people in those areas. That's gonna give you a long uh, sight, you know, sight plane being able to see that it's clear and that there's no people and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's another suggestion. All right, number nine is you want to note any potential danger areas along your route as well, and. Potential danger areas could be a variety of different things. Maybe it's a prison, you know, maybe it's biker bars, maybe it's democratic polling stations, um, or a police station, or, <laughs> you know, who knows what in your area could be considered to be a danger area. But, yeah, you know, scouting them out and making note of those things is going to be important. Um, the next thing, number 10, is you also want to take note of all the bridges and overpasses as well as the blind turns and the choke points. Uh, essentially what you're doing here is you're going to be looking for potential ambush locations and potential spots for roadblocks to pop up so that you're aware of them. Um, again, all this is related to planning uh, and planning ahead. and um, if you live in a city and it's a really chaotic a disaster and something happens and you need to get out, your chances are going to be much, much better if you've done this kind of surveillance, this kind of route planning, this kind of, you know, uh, survey, you know, of, of where you're going to go. Um, you know, different surveys like this are used by the military all the time and it's for good reason. It's because you need to know what's going to lay ahead of you. Um, you know, when you're transiting. And like I said, the, the key thing here is, is you want to layer it. You want to start with the vehicle. Vehicle and a trailer, perhaps, you know. A vehicle and a trailer with an ATV and a bike in it, or, or multiple bikes if you have a family. Um, you know, you, you could use a lot of different things. But if the vehicle doesn't work, Unhook the trailer, hook the ATV and the, to the trailer, and then take the ATV. Haul the kids and everybody in the trailer along with their bikes and all their bags and all that kind of stuff. ATV breaks down, gets stuck, whatever the case may be. You pull the kids and their bikes out and their you know, bug out bags and whatever they can carry. Maybe you even got a bike trailer sticking in that trailer. Who knows? You pull the bikes out and you go on bike. Then... If for whatever reason that that gets messed up, you got your bug out bags with you. You put your bug out bags on your back and then you go, you know, on foot. But planning to start out on foot is just silly because it's it's reducing the amount of distance that you can cover, you know, in a short amount of time. Your ideal situation is is that you want to get out of the city as fast as possible by whatever means possible. And having those multiple layers is going to be able to help you out in doing that. And that that's how I plan. Um, that's how I think you guys should plan. And, you know, having backups, doing reconnaissance, and looking at the route, making some notes ahead of time. All those things are important things for, um, you know, making what would be like an emergency trip. When you have to go, you got to go quick. You need to know all that stuff ahead of time. So... Anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful. These are just, you know, 10, 10 of my thoughts or tips on, you know, route planning and uh, how to, you know, how to get out of a city in a critical, you know, kind of emergency. So, uh, as always, guys, I definitely appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And don't forget to lift the six Ps. 
proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and when you do, make sure to push the bell icon so you get notifications that the new videos are out. Thank you.